In the last video, we looked at the situation where you don't really care about the sequences as much anymore. You care about the number of times a certain thing happened in n trials, no matter what sequences were involved. So we called that a binomial model. Now there is a formula to calculate with the binomial model. Like in the last video, we wrote down all the sequences, calculated the probability of each, added them all up. But you can do that in one step if you have this handy formula. Um, we're not going to use this formula in this class, but I put it there because you'll probably see it at some point. The, the new thing with this formula is you have this numerator here, n. Uh, I'm actually not really screaming at you. It's not an exclamation point like in English. The exclamation point here is called the factorial function. So the way that works is 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if you had 10 factorial, it would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Clearly, it takes some work to do this, especially when the numbers get big. But this formula would give you, for instance, the probability of four successes in n trials if you just put 5 in for n and put 4 in for k, where p is the probability of success, which in this case was 0.81. Let's not do that. Let's use the Excel function that's already built in. So the best Excel function to use is a pretty new one. It's called binome.dist.range uh, is the one that gives you the most flexibility. So if you type that in, you notice the first argument it wants is trials, which in this case was 5. Probability S means probability of success, which in this case was 0.81. And then you have some options. This is number S meaning number of successes. In this case, we had four successes in five trials. The great thing about this formula is you could do a range. Like if you want 4 to 9 or 3 to 7, whatever the, the problem is, but if you just want exactly four, you don't have to enter anything else. You just close the formula and done. That was it, all that work in one simple thing right there. So we do the same thing here. This is binome.dist.range. Five trials, probability 0.81. Number of successes is three. That's it, we get this same number, 19.2% right here. And then we can actually just do the same thing and I'll just copy and paste it. But we can do the same thing for all these others and just change the number of successes. Here in this line we want five. We already did four and three. We could do two, one, and here we have zero successes, which rounds to zero, but we could show more decimal points if we wanted to match our answer over here. How many decimal points you show? Usually you want three significant digits if you're familiar with that concept. Um, but in terms of web work or something, more is always safer. So now you can see the probability of hitting five times is here, four is here, three is here, two is here, one is here, and zero is here. And now if you add all those up, you will get exactly 100%. Okay, it's cut off on the screen here, but if you add all these up, you get exactly 100%. You've covered all of your outcomes. Of course, you don't have to use Excel. We've got this great program, GeoGebra, which can do the same thing. So when you go in here, it normally shows you the normal model, but instead of that, go to the binomial model. And don't mix this word up. You know, it's not related to bimodal or anything that we've seen before. It's just another example of names being weird in statistics. But here you enter your n, which in our case was 5. Your p was 0.81. Yeah, this program is so weird. 0.81. And it gives you, it actually plots the distribution for you right here. Um, you can do things here like lower tail, uh, mid, upper tail, stuff like that. But for a lot of the problems in this class, like especially web work, just go over here to the table and just read off the exact numbers. Like you notice that probability of zero successes was 0, 0, 0, 0002, which matches what we had here. Probability of four successes was 0 0.4089, which matches what we had here. So you don't even really need to use the Excel command. You can just put the relevant numbers into GeoGebra and then look at the calculations it gives you right there. So really just enter N, enter P, and then figure out what the problem is asking. Some of the questions might ask like two to three or two or more or not more than two or something like that. But you just read off the relevant probabilities and add them up as needed.